Hey, it's Steve. What I'm going to be going over is kind of a type of a tenant class, or what are you looking for when you're looking at set areas? A super common question that I always see is, um, like, what area are you looking for in regards to a class? And the main ones we have are very simply A, B, C, and D, right? So if you're talking very loosely, oh, I'm looking for a B class area. Maybe it might be helpful if you know what that is, right? Or I'm looking for an A class area. What does that even mean? So the main four classes we have are A, B, C, D, F. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it F, that's not even worth it. But the main thing we're looking at here is a tenant class or kind of quality of the area. Typically in an A class area, it's gonna be extremely nice. You're gonna have an extremely high gross income. There's gonna be tons of single family homes. There's gonna be very few either duplexes or multifamilies. There might not even be a many three families. There might be a slim number of duplexes in this area. And that might be extremely hard to see because I'm using green. Actually, so I got a different place. All right, man, we got blue. So there's gonna be a slim number of duplexes and that's probably gonna be less than, I mean, I would say 20% multifamily in that whole entire area. And that looks so much better with blue. So this is gonna be your highest class it's gonna be very hard to find a multifamily, and the price per unit is gonna be extremely high. Typically in an A-class area, in Massachusetts, um, let's see, in Central Mass, median home price for an A-class area in Worcester County, it's gonna be probably in the mid fours. And you're looking at a duplex, probably around the area of the mid, mid threes, actually probably high fours. Um, so that's just a rough outline for an A-class. In a B-class area, this is a very nice. In a B-class area, not as many multifamilies, but when you see them, that's going to be a pretty good rental pool, just because they're not having a single family home. And if you have a duplex or a triplex in this area, it's going to be in a great location. The school systems are going to be good. And there's not going to be much crime. Because the key thing is we're also looking at is the school systems and the crime, right? So if there's good school systems, there's not going to be a lot of crime. And very minimal crime at all in an A-class area. I mean, it's phenomenal. It's going to be hard to find investments in A-class areas. That's why the sweet spot essentially is the B-class, right? You still have extremely good school systems. You have limited crime. You have a nice area. And most people would want to live in a B-class area. Right, it's great. Next, we're kind of looking at a C-class area. I would say there's many C-class areas in Worcester, many C-class areas, but there are probably 20, 25 little individual communities in Worcester, but most of them, I would, I would say most of them, a lot of them are C-class, which means you have a mix of multis and single families. I'm kind of getting my head myself, but when we go to a D-class area, it's mostly multis. So you have, let's say, a whole street. If you look at how many homes are on the street, let's say it's 50. There's probably, I mean, 90% multifamilies, and that could be all triples, right? So that's just a raw number. In this area where it's mostly multifamilies, the school system's not going to be great. There's going to be more crime. The school system's not great. Most people are renting. Here you're probably dealing with Section 8. That's why I'm not a fan of D-class areas. You can potentially get more reward, right? You can potentially create, create greater cash flow, but it's not always the case. So the D-class area, I personally shy away from. Some people can kill it with the D-class area. They're, they're willing to take on more risk. You might have to deal with more evictions. You might have to screen a lot more. You're not going to get as quality tenants, but it might be for you. A C-class area is not a bad spot to be in. I would personally shoot for a B, but a C-class area, you might have a you might have a greater rental pool, but it's not 100 percent sure to be honest. Um, in each area, you're going to have a different rental pool or target renter, and that's always very critical to think when you're looking at different types of areas. But overall, as you can kind of see, I just want to go over the different classes of areas, so you can be oh, I'm looking for a B class area, I'm looking for three to four units in a B class area. Okay, you're not going to see many four families in an A area or many four families in a B area. That's why a triple is going to be hard to find. 
And keep in mind, this is only for residential, right? This is only two to four units. Commercial is a whole different story. I'm just talk, talking strictly two to four units. So hopefully, this gives you more knowledge of when you are looking for a property. You, you have a target area, and that's really gonna help out when someone, if you ask, hey, I'm looking for a property this class. Oh, are you looking at XYZ Town? That's gonna help, and it's gonna show you have a knowledge base where you can identify based on a class. Keep in mind, these are not hard and fast. Each A, B, C, D area, every person you talk to is gonna have a different rough requirement, but in theory, most people will know what type of areas they're looking for, right? And that's critical, just to know what you're looking for and always keep your eyes peeled for set areas. So hopefully you guys learned something in this video. You have a decent feel on a tenant class, and it should be able to help you out on a tenant class, I'm sorry, um, location or an area. Could be considered tenant class too because you're gonna be renting towards a specific tenant class. But hopefully you found this helpful. Please sub, get close to that 150, which is phenomenal. And uh, see you guys in the next video.